I think it's about time someone tested these knights' valor. They can go ahead and take up the Mighty Ducks Flying V all they want. They're not gonna be able to do anything against the Centaur Pete. What happened to the Centaur Pete? Oh no. <laughs> As if having a dozen units sewn butt to mouth wasn't bad enough. Now they've got riders? It's centorpede cavalry? What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, where for today's episode, I really wanted to continue taking a look at these workshop campaigns, where I get to face off against every single faction in the game once. Now they get their one shot to throw their best at me, and if I can beat them, then I get to move on. With the kicker being, I can use any unit that I want, including any of the cursed and overpowered modded units that I've downloaded. Once again, we'll start things off with Snuffy leading the Tribal Faction, and I've never felt particularly threatened by the Tribal Faction, with their tiny little Ooga Booga Cavemen brains, and even tinier loincloths. But that being said, I'm not gonna underestimate them. I'm gonna send in a uh, tank. Just a tank. I, I know I've got more money left over, but like at the same time, you know, if I had to stake my YouTube channel in predicting who would win in a fight between the prehistoric blue man group with sharpened sticks and their fuzzy pet elephant, or like an M1 Abrams with high velocity rounds, I'm gonna bet on the tank. I have a good feeling about this. I know Snuffy can survive a hit in the head because let's be honest, there isn't a whole lot going on upstairs, but we should be able to hit him in the taint hard enough to finish things off. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Just shake him off. Oh. I didn't actually bet on the tank, did I? I, I, I know YouTube is always listening. I just don't understand how anyone can design a $15 million war vehicle that can get taken out by a pointy branch. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, maybe I'm trying something that's a little bit too modern. You know, these guys are really set in the past. We need to dial things back. We'll try a more ancient war vehicle in the chariot. We haven't seen a whole lot of these wobbly idiots. I'm technically spending more of my money, so hopefully they can just demolish Snuffy. That's what I'm talking about. Make him do a front flip. I don't think they survived the thickness, though. Is that horse trying to tunnel underground? <laughs> can you maybe not? I, I didn't mean stop entirely. I, I just meant like uh, freaking wobbly horses. I know we literally just said that our weapons might be a little bit too modern, but I'm kind of curious what would happen if we used a Gatling gun or two or three. Like, they're just so close together, they're not wearing anything, right? They got exposed nips, we should be able to mow them down. I've got more money though, and this time I'm actually gonna give them some kind of backup. Except, I don't mean cannon fodder backup, I mean like moral support backup. <laughs> Make them fire a little faster. Yeah, I like the sound of that. So long as you guys can actually get to cranking, come on, furiously crank it in Snuffy's face. G get your mind out of the gutter. Oh, oh, no, please, please, you gotta, you gotta shoot, what do you mean? Come on! Like, it's a rule as old as time. Like, for as long as man has existed, we've known if a giant animal is walking at you, shoot it in the face! Okay, now I'm actually a little pissed off, so we're gonna go try hard mode. I'm dropping down a Reaper who should be able to take care of everyone except for Snuffy. His thickness exceeds the capability of the tentacles. <laughs> Snuffy is gonna be taken care of by the Ballistae. Ballistas? Ballista. I've, I've only made like 50 episodes of this game. How could I possibly know that by now? And then we need to protect the Reaper with something like shield bearers because I have no doubt that those ranged units are gonna try their best to take him out. Something like that. Perfect. <laughs> Should be absolutely flawless so long as the Ballista actually wipes out Snuffy. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Reaper, now get in there and do your thing. Shish kebab, all those anuses. Oh, that feels so much better. What a relief. 
I know we technically haven't won yet, but I mean, when bodies are flying past the camera, it, it, it's a win. Look, look at that stupid spear, as if that does anything. He doesn't have any nuts. I completely forgot that last episode we realized that I can't use modded units in the workshop campaigns. Like, I just want to use these freaky cursed units to take on challenges, but nothing will let me. So once again, I'm going to beat one of the levels, and then as a reward, we're going to add insult to injury by going to the sandbox and beating them again with modded units. And this is actually something that you guys wanted to see in the comments the last episode. We've got a stampede of snuffies versus a charge of the bear cavalry. I can't get enough of the bear cavalry. It's just something about a weird Russian unit riding on an armored bear that tickles me the right way. And I want to try to make this a relatively fair fight. Okay, technically Snuffy is outnumbered, but I would imagine the weight class is pretty similar right now. 15 to 8, the money's about even. This should be pretty fairly matched, I would imagine. Or not at all. I don't think a single bear dropped. They just tenderized Snuffy like a giant prehistoric steak. Jesus Christ, Snuffy, don't look at me like that. You know you're still one of my favorites. It's just all for the fun. You know, it's for the video. It's nothing personal. I like your hair today. Very business in the front, party in the back. How have I never noticed that Snuffy has a rockin' mullet? That's amazing! <laughs> I realized near the end of last episode that the Warhorn is actually a modded unit. I, I feel like we've seen this thing time and time again, but it's constantly getting changed. Now it's not necessarily going to be like the Elder Scrolls, you know, Dragonborn shouting and pushing stuff over. Instead, I think it instantly freezes something. You think they'd be able to freeze Snuffy? Oh, oh, not fast enough. Okay, well, Snuffy's going to get his revenge this time. <laughs> now you're going to learn. So it's really more of a, a cold toot rather than an instant freeze. Good to know. How about we try the chili whistle against something that isn't covered in fat and fur? I feel like that wasn't a very fair match. These guys are also not going to make for a very fair match either, to be perfectly honest. They've got exposed nips and probably the bottoms of their butt cheeks. I would imagine they're cold as it is before we begin the toots. <laughs> oh, yeah. Frozen rock solid. Are they dead? I think they're just straight up instantly dead. Moving on to our next challenge with the farmer faction. You know, I say challenge in air quotes because I'm not sure how many of them there are, but I can guarantee that this is going to be a bit of a strategic oopsie because they're hiding in tall grass. So I'm thinking fire. We're just gonna use fire. Let's just rain down fire. We've got a whole bunch of skeleton archers with fire. And then last episode, I learned that the dragon is overpowered as anything. <laughs> I would imagine they'll make quick work of that tall grass. Go ahead, guys. Treat him like Pokemon. Oh, what? The entire Shire was hiding in the neighbor's lawn? I didn't expect that. Oh, my frame rate, you stupid little hobbitses. All right, well, this is fine. We still got the magic. Hopefully, we're still torching them, right? Do I need to slow this down or something? I feel like I would have a better frame rate in Microsoft PowerPoint right now. Oh my God, it's so much fire. Are they even getting close to us? There's no way they're doing damage to anyone right now. Hopefully. I'm, I'm hearing pain, but I can't tell whose pain it is. The dragons are a bit of a strange unit, because technically the dragon is alive, but it's more so the dragon bears. Oh my god. This is what happens when you unleash too many hobbits. We go down to like five frames per second. Can you guys please turn around? Just just turn this way. There's, there's a choke point over here that could really use some barbecuing. Oh no. They're not going to be able to reach the freaking scarecrow. He, he's stuck on the fence, and then because of that, they're not going to walk forward and get him. No! <gasps> what kind of... Oh, that's, that's really annoying. Because that isn't my strategic oopsies. That's just the game screwing me. Can we maybe get him at the last second for a bit of revenge? How have we not singed his feathers yet? It's literally made of hay and feathers. That, that should be... Pretty friggin' flammable. Oh, we've still got quite a few skeletons left. This doesn't look too bad. 
you know, once the dust settles and the frame rate kind of returns, we actually look like we could stand a chance. Ooh, watch out for the birds. Come on, guys, guys, shoot, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Shoot the hay boy. <laughs> yeah, it's November. You could take a hike. <laughs> Halloween is over with. That was way too close. I never did figure out why sometimes the scarecrow was just a god among men, and then other times you might as well have a garbage bag full of grass on your team. <laughs> it just doesn't add up, but I wouldn't mind seeing them get absolutely demolished by the new dark peasant. He looks a little different. Yeah, he's still got all the satanic slappies, but his eyes seem to be a little bit more messed up and... He's done something with his hair. Can't quite put my finger on it. Very Vegeta-esque. I'm not even going to try to pretend like this is a fair fight. I just want to see some birds get backhanded. Oh. That's different. So he he doesn't do the same thing as the other Dark Peasant, right? Um... What? I mean, yeah, that is a bunch of exploding magic birds. I can kind of understand why most units would die to that, but not the one that costs infinity. If we slim down on the bird brains and try that again, can we actually see what it is you're doing? So he splooges off a whole bunch of inky loads. They kind of look like the Reaper's swipey motion. When a unit is too big for the Reaper to penetrate, then he does something like that, except this is a projectile. Definitely does a whole bunch of damage, except your hands don't defend you. Like, the other Dark Peasant wouldn't have a bird come anywhere close to it, but you got absolutely flocked. Oh. Maybe not? Is that hand trying to grab the bird? Fly, little bird, fly! <laughs> what am I watching in slow motion right now? Okay, then. So, yeah, he can really only use, like, one defensive hand at a time. And then it seems like he almost, like, beats his chest with his hands to get stuff off of him. I would imagine that's useful if you're getting dog-piled, but not bird-piled. Should you not be grabbing something right now? Or, you know, maybe trying to kill the enemy? Just saying, you could- Oh, oh, no, there we, there we go, there, there it is, okay. So he's just got a bit of a refractory period before he can fire off another load. I am so happy the halflings are back. Like, my favorite little crash test dummies have returned to get absolutely demolished. <laughs> I want to see what happens if the Dark Peasant actually does get Hobbit piled, as it were. I would imagine he's gonna... Oh, oh, okay. So he does have multiple different types of attacks. That was a very different result. <laughs> Some of them seem to grab, pick up, and slam down, but then there's also the Dark Splooge. So you've got a mix of the both. What do you think would happen if we spread these guys out a bit? So give them some space so they don't all get tagged at once. Would they be able to make up the distance? I mean, this guy only has so many hands. Oh my god, they're so fast. <laughs> as soon as these guys get grabbed, it's just fireworks. This is such a different unit and so incredibly violent. I love it. <laughs> just watch them get pile-drived into the ground. Yeah, they didn't come anywhere close. Is there a... Uh, oh, there's a survivor hiding in the grass again. Of course! Next up, we have the medieval faction, who are very straightforward. They're just out here with their medieval vibes. Nothing particularly strange. I still want to know what kind of protein shakes the knights are taking to make them twice the height of everyone else. <laughs> but that being said, I think we might just be able to mow them down. I really want to have some kind of success with the Huacha at some point. It feels like forever since we've huacha down a bunch of units. What should I put in front of them, though? Actually, I know exactly what we need. Samurai. That way, they won't get picked off by the archers and might be able to stand a chance against any of the melee units. That feels pretty good. Definitely gonna need the watches to pull their weight though because they are not cheap. Okay, samurais can't deflect if they get shot in the back, guys. This is why I don't use the watcha nearly enough. 
I mean, you can turn the enemy king into a shish kebab. That's great. Go ahead and porcupine him up. Oof. That's interesting, but at the same time, it's just never enough. You get hit by a boulder and it's game over. I just want the Huacha to be good, just one time. Stuff like the Huacha and the Gatling Gun, they're so cool, but so bad. Every now and then when I'm making these videos, I ask myself, should I continue with the meme strategies or should I just shoot my enemy in the face? He's <laughs> like, I, I know I'm here to entertain people and not win, but winning feels real good. And if I can bring guns to a bow fight, then I'd kind of like to do that. We should be able to dodge all of the arrows and maybe some of the boulders. Nope, that's a 7-10 split. Hopefully we can shoot the big guys. Oh, oh, they've got those organs that don't care about being penetrated. Well, isn't that fun? Hopefully you can get the job done, hombre. Come on. Oh. Okay, it's high noon. I'm feeling good about that. I think it's about time someone tested these Knights Valor. You know, they can go ahead and take up the Mighty Ducks Flying V all they want. They're not gonna be able to do anything against the Centaur Pete. What happened to the Centaur Pete? Oh no. <laughs> As if having a dozen units sewn butt to mouth wasn't bad enough. Now they've got riders? It's Centaur Pete Cavalry? Even some of the riders have riders. Like, this is less so a Tabs unit and more so a mobile orgy. Well, you're definitely outvalued, but I'm having a hard time figuring out whether you're outnumbered or not. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Oh, the legs all move in unison. It's freaky. Oh, so if the main body dies, then all the riders get off and put up a fight. That's... Kinda cool. The body is still real disturbing though. <laughs> we lost, I'm not all that surprised. We need two, two would be a fair fight. I'd be willing to bet if we put two centipedes right next to one another, like as close as physically possible, then they're gonna act like one giant congealed mass. <laughs> like the end of inside. Charge my pretty. <laughs> oh. Ooh, yeah, that knight is gonna wake up in about three weeks from the coma that he was just put in and be very embarrassed that he was beaten by this thing. Not to take away from all of the other factions that we've faced off against so far, but the ancient faction is where stuff begins to get serious. They've got siege weapons, they've got gods, they've got mythological creatures. I, I still don't know what you do to make a snake stiff enough to fire like an arrow. What? I get the feeling I also don't want to know. It's probably dirty. I'm thinking I just want to run them over. I've got a lot of money. Would I just be able to fill this tiny area with a whole bunch of chariots? Is that a whole bunch of stupid or what? I get the feeling the chariots don't work well with one another. Like, they just kind of ramp into things and then get stuck on one another and... Yeah, it's, it's a friggin' disaster. <laughs> Somehow nobody has hit Zeus. Here we go, we're, we're, we're kind of like pushing him around gently. Are you guys kidding me? I've been pushed harder in a Walmart by old ladies. <laughs> this is painful to watch. Those are the runaway horses. The horses are going absolutely bananas. <laughs> Here we go, that's the speed that I need. Got into this guy's oatmeal this morning. Oh no, no, he, he's got some bolts in the, the neck. Now is not the time for break dancing. Come on, giddy up. What is wrong? Oh, they've got backup coming down the stairs of the city. Horses don't do well with stairs when their knees are made of jello. Wait a minute, that was a win? I thought for sure we had punched our ticket to the bone zone, but they actually managed to pull it off. <laughs> Way to go, horses. This is probably gonna be a huge mistake, but I really want to see what's changed about the Rune Mage, because apparently they have two attacks now. So not only can they convert the enemy into a werewolf, but they can also do something else. I also want to see what they can do against a unit that costs a lot and is very powerful, but it's not very big. We know that they can convert giants and snuffies and stuff like that into werewolves, but what about a regular unit? You know, like a shield bear or a Sarissa is about the same size as Zeus. It's just that Zeus can hurl lightning bolts and does a whole lot more. So will you guys be easily converted? Yup. 
do they still throw lightning? I think if you can convert all of them, then they're very confused. Okay, we, we didn't convert them nearly fast enough there. When there's no one for them to turn on, they just kind of stand there with like water wings on, but. <laughs> That's interesting. So the Rune Mage can fire fireballs now, it looked like. There are a whole bunch of fireworks there that were definitely not all Zeus. Oh, come on, don't be like that. He's kind of a holy man. That's a different religion, but cut him some slack. Zeus is probably not the way to go there. How about we do something like headbutter versus headbutter? When there's a whole lot of headbutting happening, some of them get converted into werewolves, and then the fight will continue. Oh, yeah. They're actually, like, charging up the runes and firing. <gasps> that seems really effective. And then the red is the conversion, so they switch back and forth. Interesting. And fire. <laughs> yup, they're a lot better now. They used to be like the priest. Now the priest just kind of sits there and wololos, healing people, and then that's about it. So when it comes down to just having the priest left, he can shove his holy thumb up his holy arse, but <laughs> these guys can actually defend themselves. Uh, we might have a bit of a problem here. We're moving on to the Viking faction, which in itself is fair enough, and I'm a little disappointed that they have Legacy Faction Thor, and I can't use modded Thor, or better yet, ask him who's his daddy and invite Odin. The problem is that they've only given me $1,200 to beat this. I, I mean, Thor alone costs $2,200. Then they've got three boats and an entire army. It's gotta be like five or six or ten thousand dollars worth of units there. And I get twelve hundred. <gasps> what could cost twelve hundred dollars that would win this? I, I'm at a complete loss. I have no idea what I should be using. This absolutely has to be a typo. Really, there's no way I'm supposed to have twelve hundred. Maybe twelve thousand? Would that make sense? Or am I supposed to only be able to afford six vampires against that army? <laughs> Unless I've got my own backup coming out of the trees, I get the feeling this is gonna be real stupid. You guys gonna work some magic or what? I don't even know why I'm asking. You see, this is the drawback to workshop campaigns, because if somebody screws up, then you're just out of luck. Sure, you've invested an entire episode into beating the campaign, but now you've reached a point that you can't possibly win, and there's just no progressing. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and take out my frustrations on the Viking faction using their All-Father. Or All-Fathers in this case. I guess we could go with, uh, three? That's technically a fair fight. Not sure how technically is gonna work out in their favor or not. I mean, Odin is a little disappointing sometimes. He's a really cool unit, but when he gets piled up on, he doesn't rain down the pain quite the same on the plane. Ooh, look at that fancy hat, sir. Oh, you're really gonna <laughs> slap around some gods or not? I mean, they're surviving. They're really taking the damage. I'm impressed. They're also flicking birds all over the place, which is hilarious. <laughs> Just go down. Yeah, it, it's not worth it. <gasps> For a second there, I thought we were gonna lose this, but nope, Odin's got it in the bag. Phew. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's just gonna make me more frustrated. Okay, I, I think I'm good now. You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And this is the drawback to user-generated content. You know, sometimes stuff just isn't quite as polished as what the developers would make, and you get stuck and a little bit let down, but it's worth it for stuff like the mods. Once again, this mod is called Stalingrad 5, I believe. It's made by someone named MD. Really great, I just, I love using it all the time, just having weird new units that you can try out. And if you guys spot any more workshop campaigns, that are worth my time, then be sure to leave a comment, leave a like on the video if you want to see more, and I'll return to mess around in tabs again soon. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.